بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continue on on in our study of aqidah tawasitiyah by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahu Allah ta'ala we reach the portion of the treaties where Sheikh al-Islam rahimahu Allah ta'ala he said he he was, uh, he spoke about the definite definition of iman the perhaps more detailed explanation because iman it can be explained in several ways or several aspects of iman there's iman when we're referring to which comes in the nas of the hadith of jibril which talks about the pillars of iman and tu'minu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wal yawm al akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa sharr talking about the uh, to believe in allah to believe in his uh, tu'minu billahi wa malaikatihi and his angels and his messengers and the books and the uh the divine decree the good and the evil of it in the day of judgment all of those make up the pillars of iman those are the pillars of iman however the definition of iman the ta'rif of iman this is something a, a little bit uh, uh different or the more general ta'rif with ahl sunnati wal jama'ah regarding iman and as Sheikh al-Islam says, he said, وَمِنْ أُصُولِ أَهْلِ سُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ أَنَّ الدِّينَ وَالْإِيمَانَ قَوْلٌ وَالْعَمَلٌ وَقَوْلُ الْقَلْبِ وَالْلِسَانِ وَعَمَلَ الْقَلْبِ وَالْلِسَانِ وَالْجَوَارِحِ وَأَنَّ الْإِيمَانَ يَزِيدُ بِطَاعَةٍ وَيَنْقُصُ بِالْمَعْسِيَةِ وَهُمْ مع ذلك لا يكفرون أهل الكبلة بمطلق المعاصي والكبائر كما يفعله الخوارج بل الأخوة الإيمانية ثابتة مع المعاصي كما قال سبحانه وتعالى في آية القصاص قال فمن عفي له من أخيه شيء ف تِبَاعٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَإِنْ طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَاصْلِحُوا فَاصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِنْ بَغَتْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تُفِيءَ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ فَاتْ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ وقال سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بينهما بين الأخويكم شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى he said it is from the أصول from the principles of أهل السنة والجماعة that the deen or the religion and iman are names of action, uh, a practice, and professing, meaning to profess on the tongue, profession by the heart and the tongue, and the actions by the heart, tongue, and the limb. So iman is comprised of three components. Our faith is what we believe as Muslims, is that iman, it has to do with statements of the tongue, iman has to do with actions of the limbs, and iman has to do with actions of the heart, what we believe in our heart. That is the aqeed of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That's what we believe as Muslims uh, regarding iman, because many of the groups of deviation, they went astray with regards to iman and with regards to these components. Some of them, they say, as we mentioned, the murjia, they believe that iman is only restricted to the heart. And some of them, re iman is only uh, a testimony of faith. And others. And then the khawarij, they deviate in iman, and we're going to talk about a little bit about them as well, bi idnillah ta'ala. So Shaykh al-Islam, he said, 
after mentioning that Iman is comprised of those components, he said, Faith increases by obedience and decreases by committing sins. So Ahlul Sunnah, this is also uh, the belief of Ahlul Sunnah Tiwil Jama'ah, those who follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and follow the Minhaj of the Salaf al-Saleh, Radiallahu Ta'anu Majma'in, beginning with the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Radiallahu Ta'anu Majma'in, is that they believe that faith increases uh, with obedience to Allah and that it decreases with disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning more you commit sins the more your faith goes down the more you do good your faith goes up your iman goes up Along with this, they do not call the people of the Qibla, the Muslims, to be kafir on the grounds of their committing absolute and major sins as the Khawarijou. This is imperative. The Ahl Sunnah, we believe your Iman fluctuates. That sometimes your Iman is high, sometimes your Iman is low. And your Iman increases by good deeds and decreases by bad deeds. And that a person, even if they commit bad sins, if they drink alcohol, if they commit adultery, if they do drugs, if they do all kind of different bad sins, as long as they don't think those sins are halal and lawful, they're still a Muslim. They're still your brothers and sisters in Islam. So for example, you see a sister, she goes to the nightclub, she's in a mini skirt, and you see that, and you see her on hijab, sometimes on Jumu'ah, or this and that and the other, you know for a fact that what, uh, or you do not make takfir of her. You do not say she is a disbeliever because she is doing those evil, wicked sins. Even if she's committing zina, even if she's drinking alcohol, even if she's uh, not wearing hijab. No, she's a wicked sinner. She is committing open and wicked sins. So Ahl Sunnah believes that. But the Khawarij, on the other hand, because they believe the major sins take you out of the fold of Islam, they believe those people are kuffar. And this is wrong. And they are the ones who are misguided. Uh, with shubahat, with doubtful matters in their aqidah and in their creed and in their methodology uh, regarding takfir. On the contrary, the brotherhood in Iman is proved despite committing sins, as Allah the Glorified says, and this is the first ayah we read, but if the killer is forgiven by the brother or the relatives of the killed against blood money, then adhering to it with fairness, then, you know, being, uh, accepting that blood money with fairness, being just, showing us that that person has not left the fold of Islam even though they killed a believer. And this is in Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And if two parties or groups among the believers, amongst the believers, fall to fighting, then make peace between them both. But if one of them rebels against the other, then fight you all against the one which rebels till it complies with the command of Allah. Then if it complies, then make re reconciliation between them justly and be equitable. Verily, Allah loves those who are equitable. The believers are nothing else than brothers in, the, in faith. So make rec reconciliation between your brothers Allahu Akbar look at that ayah that is so many um, so many so much hikmah and wisdom and and a guidance for us if we only practice it make islah between your brothers make islah between your brothers but going back to the point of why we mentioned the ayat the, shah, shah, the shahid here is uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that two parties of the believers were fighting. Meaning believers can sometimes fall to fighting and killing one another. And it's sinful. But it doesn't take them out of the fold of Islam because Allah still referred to them as believers and brothers in Iman. So... Then Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, If a corrupt person holds fast to Islam, he is not denied of Islam as a whole, meaning he's still a Muslim. Nor is it said that he will always live in hell, as the Mu'tazila say. So, if someone drinks alcohol, and they are doing bad things, and they go, and Allah punishes them in the hellfire, are they going to be in the hellfire forever, and he's a Muslim? And he was drinking alcohol? What if he's at the nightclub? What if he was smoking weed? Okay, good. So no, that a person doing all of those sins, even though they're major sins, that if they die on that, meaning a Muslim, a Muslim that dies on those major sins, that if they go to hell, they will be removed from hell. They will not be in hell forever.
a Muslim, if he's a real, he or she is a real Muslim, they will not be in the hellfire forever. If, but if they're a hypocrite, a munafik, meaning they didn't really believe in their heart, then they'll be in the hellfire forever. Just like the kuffar, and they'll be in there, and they will never get out of the hellfire, and have the worst of punishments. So, the Aqid of Ahl, that's the Aqid of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Uh, the corrupt man, meaning the person who's doing major sins, is rather included in the category of Iman, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Thus it is free, one, uh, thus, thus it is to free one, the head of a mu'min. Meaning this has to do with uh, freeing a slave, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, free the uh, slave. Uh, the believing slave. And sometimes he is not included in the absolute faith as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated. The believers are only those who, when Allah is mentioned, feel a fear in their hearts. And when his verses, the Quran, are recited unto them, they increase their iman. So that shows us that's how the true believer, the true person of Ahl Iman, that when they hear the Quran, that it, it softens their heart and it makes their iman go stronger. But other believers, other Muslims, might hear the verses and it doesn't really affect them that much. That means they're still a believer, but they're a weak believer. They're not like the same, they're not like the strong person who's full of Iman. So that lets us know that what? Our Iman, our faith, it fluctuates. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. Sometimes we're strong mu'mins, and sometimes we're weak mu'mins. The Prophet ﷺ said, When an adulterer commits illegal sexual intercourse, then he is not a believer at the time he is doing it. And when a drinker of alcoholic liquor drinks it, and when a thief steals, then he is not a believer at the time of stealing. And when a robber robs, and the people look at him, then he is not a believer at the time of doing the robbery. And this was collected in Bukhari. So, then the Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he explained, We say that he is a man of deficient faith faith or he is faithful believer by virtue of faith and a corrupt man because of committing major sins so he will not be he will not be assigned to an absolute category nor an absolute category will be snatched away from him meaning that he will not be absolutely on fully man we can't say that he's a perfect strong believer but at the same time, we cannot call this person a disbeliever. Instead, they are a fasik because they're drinking their alcohol, because they're committing adultery, because they're doing all the other sinfulness that they're doing, but they're still a believer. Unless they say, for example, when does a person leave Islam for committing those major sins? When is one of the times that they will leave Islam? Does anyone know? One of the times a person who drinks alcohol will not be a Muslim anymore is if they say that their sin is halal. So if you say, brother, please quit drinking alcohol, please. And he says, hey, if I drink alcohol, that's okay, that's my business. And it's okay, it's permissible for me. Then this person has disbelieved in Allah because Allah has prohibited drinking alcohol. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke about drinking alcohol and that this is Muharram. This is away from the religion of Islam and this is not permissible. And this person is therefore making the, the unlawful thing lawful by saying it's lawful for them. Or for example, the sister that commits adultery. She has a boyfriend. And you say, sister, please, try to, why don't, why don't you just get married? Why don't you come to the halal? Why don't you leave that sinfulness? But she says, what I'm doing is okay. It's okay. It's my business. And if I have a boyfriend, and if me and my boyfriend do what we want to do, that's okay. Then this woman saying that it's permissible to have a boyfriend, saying that it's permissible to commit zina and adultery and fornication, then they have disbelieved because of this. Because they believe that the haram is haram. Halal, and that is takes you out of the fold of Islam because you're going against, you're denying the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lied. And however, as we've mentioned in many of our lectures in, in this dars and, uh, and, and in uh, Nawaqid al-Islam in detail we went about the issue of takfir, that we don't 
it's not for us to make those rulings. So even when we hear someone, our brothers and sisters, making istihla like this, you should still take it to, if you're in a Muslim uh, country, you should take it to the judge. It's That's for him to arbitrate and him to uh, adj adj uh, adjudicate. But it's not for us to make those rulings. Or take it to the scholars. If you're in a non-Muslim land, take it to the scholars. Because perhaps this person has this excuse of ignorance. And the ulama speak extensively about this. That maybe this person is a new Muslim and they don't know that having a boyfriend or girlfriend is haram. Or maybe this person is a new Muslim and they don't know that uh, drinking alcohol is haram. And so then out of that they say that it's okay for them. And this person perhaps would be excused by ignorance. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.